There is a test, a journey, that most of us will take at some point in our lives, but not all of us will emerge at the other end, changed for the better. This is how to work out if you have what it takes to be an empowering parent or boss or other type of leader, or whether you have been unknowingly captured by the dark and destructive versions of your ruling self, the figurehead or the vampire. My name's Hazel Gale. I'm a former therapist turned author and creator of the fantasy mental health game Betwixt, which is where you can find all of my best and most creative tools for building self-awareness and self-compassion. And this series of videos is devoted to the, in my opinion, fascinating world of archetypal character arcs. These are the archetypal journeys taken by characters so familiar to us from myth and tradition and religious teachings, as well as all other types of story, that they exist within us as shared parts of the personality. Alive in what Carl Jung called the collective unconscious, archetypes influence every part of our world, from our self-image to our life choices, our beliefs about what we can and cannot do, what we do and do not deserve. The Luminary's journey, which we're exploring in this video, is the path we take after having completed our hero's journey, or in the gender neutral language I'm using, the warrior's journey. And although much less familiar than the good old hero's three act story, the Luminary's arc is still a story that you'll know unconsciously. And you may even have lived it at some stage in your life. But, and this is an important but, even though we all know this story unconsciously, unless we actively bring it into conscious awareness, it could end up doing us more harm than good. Because just like all the other archetypes, the luminary has multiple faces. And if you don't shine a light on all three versions, then it may not be the luminary's path that you walk in life, but the figureheads or the vampires. In a nutshell, the Luminary's story begins with a call to leadership. But the thing is, it's one they don't really want to hear. Life is good. As the archetype that follows the warrior's journey, they've already had their adventure. They've slayed their dragon and returned a savior to the village. But if they are to protect this comfortable life they've created for themselves and those they love from some kind of external threat, aka the archetypal antagonist of invader, then they will have to step up to the plate because only they can fill the void that is the second archetypal antagonist, the empty throne, symbolic of a flawed, incapable or corrupt current leader or governing system of any kind, externally or internally. As a result of all this, the luminary, should they heed the call, will have to make the reluctant transition from loving, connected, nurturing parent slash boss slash leader to the more detached role of someone who can lead and empower by taking a step back imposing order and trusting those they love to make their own journeys in life. But none of this, of course, is a given. And should the luminary decide that they don't want to give up the dependent adoration of their children or the friendly connection they have with their staff or anyone else under their laissez-faire leadership style, they may be forced into the archetypal shadow role of either the figurehead, which represents a passive refusal to accept the call to leadership and fight for what one loves, or the vampire or vampiric parent, which represents an aggressive refusal to accept the call to leadership and do what's best for those they love. Let's finish our exploration of the Luminary's character arc by diving into each of these shadow archetypes. But before we do, please remember that these are archetypal models or concepts. They are not personality types, more like modes that we can all slip into if we're not careful. So the figurehead. I found the Luminary's shadow archetypes the hardest to translate into their gender neutral versions. In Wyland's more traditionally named sequence, this archetype, a shadow form of the queen, is called the Snow Queen. In myth and fairy tales, this character is often a beautiful, childless, in other words, broken, woman who lives alone in some kind of ice palace. She only finds her redemption when her heart is thawed by the love of either some children or a questing hero who makes her the object of his healing affections. And it's in tropes like these that we can see just how steeped in patriarchal values a lot of our surviving mythological content really is. I don't know about you, but that doesn't resonate for me at all, and it never has done. And I'm sure that that would be even more true for people who identify as male. Traditionally, our culture simply wouldn't put a male character in that kind of situation. And yet, people who identify as male, as well as all the rest of us, are absolutely capable of falling into the clutches of the Luminary's passive shadow archetype, which is a withdrawn, unassertive leader who really sees themselves as one of the underlings still and is therefore ineffective as a leader. So goodbye, Snow Queen, and hello, Figurehead, a stony, statue-like effigy of leadership who has frozen into a state of impotent passivity. 
Governed by fear, the figurehead deep down still sees themselves as the naïve, a dependent person who must submit to authority rather than assume it. The figurehead still believes that someone should be looking after them. And so, no, they will not, cannot look after anyone else, let alone empower them. For representations of the figurehead, think Mr. Darcy in Pride and Prejudice, Jon Snow in the beginning of Game of Thrones, and Blanche Dubois in A Streetcar Named Desire. The figurehead may have got here as a result of simply following the passive paths from the outset, starting out as the naive, then growing into the coward, and so therefore lacks the resources to truly lead at this stage. In that case, in order to step up, the luminary would have to go back and start from the beginning by taking the tenderfoot's journey, which is totally viable and not at all uncommon in real life, by the way. But the figurehead could also be a result of the luminary's fall from grace, a perhaps intentional refusal to step up to the plate, either because they don't feel capable of this next step or because they simply cannot bear to sacrifice the loving dependence of those in their care, which is a fairly tempting thing for anyone who is strongly identified with the archetype of parent and now sees that role as their identity. The second shadow archetype that looms menacingly for anyone on this journey is the aggressive vampire or vampiric parent. This is a character who rejects the altruistic light of the luminary role and chooses instead to hide away in the darkness, feeding off those around them, and in particular, those dependent on them, in order to get their own needs met. The vampire is just not strong enough within themselves to sacrifice for those they love. Again, this archetype could be simply an older version of the renegade and bully who came before. Or it could be that this character did complete those first two arcs successfully, but at this stage is just not prepared to make the sacrifices required to take their growth to the next level. Either way, they have wound up resorting to aggressive or manipulative tactics that set up an unconscious codependent bind that goes a bit like this. Because I sacrificed for you, you must now sacrifice for me. And so a toxic cycle commences. Someone at some point will have to break the pattern. And the only way to do so is to accept the luminary's call to true leadership along with the selfless sacrifice involved. Of course, there is no one-size-fits-all directive for how to do this. But if you feel like you might need to make this transition somewhere in your life, doing so will definitely involve trust. Trust in others to make their own mistakes and walk their own paths, even if those paths are not the ones you would choose for them. And trust in yourself to meet your own needs healthily to use your voice and your mindful awareness of your own thoughts and feelings so that you can set boundaries for yourself and others that will create the healthy order that is the true hallmark of the luminary's transformation. As always, I would dearly love to hear your thoughts in the comments and I really hope you find this helpful. Finally, if you'd like to take an epic journey through a magical world in the name of personal growth and wellness, then you can download Betwixt, the mental health game, which is available on the iOS app store and Google Play.